Hi, Cheryl. Hi, James. How's it going? Yeah, not too bad. Thanks very much for asking. Hey, so last time we talked about the ultimate do nothing. They got a wind up application, did nothing, and then all hell broke loose. It was people knocking on the doors, it was the liquidator coming asking for books and records, but potentially taking stuff out of the premises. All sorts of hell broke loose. So hang on, let's just rewind the clock a little bit. Say they finally did something about it and got some advice. Say they asked for some advice from a reputable source. Let's say the solvers panel. Uh, They find you, for example, and say, I need some help. I've got a wind up application and a liquidator has been appointed. What do I do? It could be me. It could be any number of people that are reputable from the solvers panel. But I think the first thing that someone from the solvers panel would recommend is they would start collating books and records, getting everything together so that when the liquidator is appointed, everything's there for the liquidator to look at. An advisor would also be um, trying to find out what entities there are. Is the plant and equipment held by a separate entity? Is the business still trading? Has there been a sale of assets that the director has done themselves? Is it commercial? And Quite often, someone from the solvers panel may even know the liquidator that's been appointed and may be in a position once the liquidator's appointed to uh, speak directly to the liquidator on behalf of the director or in conjunction with the director so that it's a little bit less intimidating for the director. And the person from the solvers panel is probably going to be able to communicate with the liquidator in the language that everybody understands person from their solvers panel and advisor will also recommend that the director cooperates fully with the liquidator. Yeah, right. Okay. So uh, play nice, be cooperative, but know your rights. Exactly. And a lot of directors think that if they just don't answer questions, don't respond to phone calls, don't do anything, that the liquidator is just going to go away. And that's not the case. The liquidator is not going to just go away. The liquidator's got a job to do and they will do it. And the more cooperative the director is, realistically, the better the journey will be through liquidation. And that's, I suppose, when we think about what your role as a director's advocate is and your role on the solvers panel is is to be a director's advocate, the person who walks with the owner of the business through this minefield and maze of of this process. So you can be the person to stand by them and make them, point them in the direction of the lawyer or the accountant or whoever who's needed uh, for particular stages in the process. That's right. And one thing that a lot of directors don't understand, I guess, is that there is a lot of paperwork that directors are required to complete. It's compulsory paperwork. It's not optional. The liquidator can um, report you to ASIC if you don't fill it in. And to be honest, for a lot of directors, they don't understand the paperwork. So an advisor, director's advocate can um, help the director locate the relevant information that's Mm -hmm. needed to fill in the paperwork. A director's advocate can make sure these forms are filled in within the required times. There are a lot of timeframes that liquidators need to abide by. And I think a lot of directors are totally overwhelmed without some sort of support going through this process. And I suppose if you're a liquidator and you sense a lack of cooperation or engagement, that can make you feel either disposed to investigate further or if there is the opportunity to do so and say, I wonder what this person's hiding, whereas if there's a person who's on the other side who's guiding the director through and providing the information that's being sought, then it's a far more sensible process. It's a far more... It's not smooth. It's not never a smooth process, but it's a process that follows a certain logic. There's no fighting necessarily. It's just... It's about arguments of law. It's about arguments of process. It's not about an individual being seen to be hiding something and some of those kind of questions, or not engaged. So it's that whole story again about fronting up or stepping in or being involved in the process. And as you described it, it's a bit about being in control. It's a process you don't control, but there is a possibility for you to have elements back, being back on the front foot, having things happen to you in a way that you can help manage. Is that sort of where these sort of things roll? That's right. I think transparency is absolutely critical in this situation. The director needs to make sure that there's complete transparency, as you say, so the liquidator doesn't think that things are being hidden, the director's being shifty or shady. Clearly, transparency, make it clear, 
provide that which you're asked for, offer assets that are, you know, access to assets to which the liquidator is entitled, but you're not required to do any more That's right. than that. Take advice from the right source and follow it. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Cheryl. Let's keep talking. A reminder that these podcasts are general in nature and do not constitute advice and they don't take into account your personal circumstances. So if you think, though, that some of the issues raised might apply to you, you should seek qualified financial, legal or counselling advice.